Good morning, my creative friends. Dr. Manette Riordan here, and this is Painting in Your PJs live with Manette. I think I'm right at the end of wearing warm, snuggly pajamas and excited to switch to my summer pajamas because it's finally getting warm here. It's actually in the 50s this morning. And yes, having just moved to Colorado in the last year, the weather is such a different part of my life than it was when I was living in Santa Barbara, California. But that's neither here nor there. This is an hour to take just for yourself. Sometimes it's 30 minutes, sometimes an hour. And painting in your PJs is all about connecting to your inner spirit, to your own inner knowing and intuition through the creative practice of art journaling or visual journaling. And I'm super excited about today's poem. So all month long in Painting in Your PJs, we are exploring poetry in honor of National Poetry Month, plus my doctorate from Stanford University was in Latin American literature and poetry. I have been a poetry lover and sometimes writer my whole life, and the poem we have today is by the, not the, re, the current poet laureate, but the one just before, I think Amanda Gorman is our current poet laureate but a Native American writer named Joy Harjo. And this poem is all about the kitchen table. And I don't know about you, but I have amazing memories of sitting around the kitchen table. And so I'm super, super excited to be sharing this poem here with all of you this morning. If you're here joining me live, please pop in and say hello. Let me know you're here. Be sure to give a like to the video if you like what we do today so we can encourage other people to watch it. And if this is your first time stopping by for painting in your PJs live where you get me raw and messy in my dress and on the page where I share my creative practice and process and I kind of ramble on about things that are important to me. And so this morning I'm super excited again to be bringing yet another powerful poem to the journey with all of you. So I'm going to switch my screen and dive right in. Good morning, Judy. Great to see you here this morning. So we have been looking all month long at different poems. This was a spread that was already in this journal from uh, another time that I was working, but I love this, love this spread and am having a lot of fun working in this junk journal. I don't always love working in these junk journals. I love to make them, right? I absolutely love to make them, but sometimes I get to where Sorry, I'm having computer challenges this morning. Bear with me, just getting things set up here. Um, but I love a good white page. And so this morning, you know, or this month, I'm having a lot of fun just playing on these pre-colored pages. And it's allowing me actually to work a little faster than sometimes I might otherwise work. I'm loving all the bits and pieces that are starting to stick out. I started doing some journaling already about the kitchen table poem and just having fun filling up a journal. And so I want to encourage you to maybe make a junk journal and I might even show how I did that with these sweet bingo cards on a future episode because I do love journal making. And it's a great way to use up bits of collage paper and all kinds of fun things. So this morning, we're going to be reading and working with the imagery. Good morning, Marion. So many memories of the <laughs> kitchen table. Your parents were good storytellers. Yes, my husband's family and my family were both great storytellers as well. And this is a beautiful book of Joy Harjo's poetry entitled The Woman Who Fell from the Sky. The Woman Who Fell from the Sky. And one of the things that's really interesting about her poems, some of them are prose poems, but they often have these little sort of notes at the end to explain the story. And so it was beautiful to read the history in here as well as the poems. And I love that she writes in prose and verse as well. So just highly recommend checking out some of Joy Harjo's poetry. And in the description for today's video, 
I included a link to the words, but also a link to a YouTube video of her reading this beautiful poem. So I made a copy of the poem and cut it out to make sure it would fit in my journal. Boy, my light's really funky this morning. I'm not sure what it's doing. I might have to move some of these lights, but give me just a second. So what that usually means is my kitty cats have come around and knocked things, or I've come around and knocked things there. That's a little better. Get rid of some of that glare. <clears throat> so this poem is Perhaps the World Ends Here, or as she calls it, the kitchen table poem. The world begins at a kitchen table. No matter what, we must eat to live. The gifts of earth are brought and prepared, set on the table. So it has been since creation, and it will go on. We chase chickens or dogs away from it. Babies teeth at the corners. They scrape their knees under it. It is here that children are given instructions on what it means to be human. We make men at it. We make women. At this table we gossip, recall enemies, and the ghosts of lovers. Our dreams drink coffee with us as they put their arms around our children. They laugh with us at our poor falling down selves and as we put ourselves back together once again at the table. This table has been a house in the rain, an umbrella in the sun. Wars have begun and ended at this table. It is a place to hide in the shadow of terror, a place to celebrate the terrible victory. We have given birth on this table and have prepared our parent, parents for burial here. At this table, we sing with joy, with sorrow. We pray of suffering and remorse. We give thanks. Perhaps the world will end at the kitchen table while we are laughing and crying, eating of the last sweet meat. Perhaps the world ends here by joy. Love, love, love that poem. And as I was doing some journaling this morning and thinking about the poem and thinking about <clears throat> how many kitchen tables I have sat around in my life, thinking about the lineage of the women in my life. So my mom's family my dad and my stepmom at their kitchen table, Brad's family, everyone were amazing cooks. So not only were there a lot of time spent sitting, drinking coffee around kitchen tables, but there were also <clears throat> so many gatherings, right? Big family gatherings. And just, I sat and just thought, <clears throat> excuse me, a little froggy this morning. Brad's out of town. I don't have anybody to talk to in the morning to warm up my voice, <clears throat> except the cats. And they've been pretty quiet this morning. The altar of the kitchen table, that's a beautiful way to put it. And there were always dogs somewhere around our kitchen table as well, right? Dogs and babies and grandbabies. And I thought of my own kitchen table and how important that was to my husband and I that we had family dinners as much as possible. So I think this I love that, the altar, the kitchen table. That might inspire another poem of our own. Good morning, Yvonne. Welcome, welcome. And so I went through some magazines, and I found a dog, and I found a variety of pictures of women. I love this mother-daughter picture. It might be a little too big for my journal. I found a picture of a kitchen table, it's way too neat and classy, I think, for most of the kitchen tables that I sat around, and it's 100% missing cups of coffee and cookie sitting on it. And then I also loved this picture of a woman in the apron because it felt like it captured that kitchen table feeling, even though she's an artist. And all the women in my family on all sides, and Brad's family too, were super creative, talented artists as well. I come from a long lineage of artists, although my mom and my aunt both sold art at different times in their lives, but it never ended up being the focus of their careers. But I come from a lineage of cooks 
and entrepreneurs and artists. And so I was really feeling in to lineage this morning and how the kitchen table was the center of that. I have such a fond memory of my grandmother at the end of her life when uh, she was wheelchair bound, she had Parkinson's and she wanted so much to be useful and not told to, you know, just sit there and she wasn't mobile. And uh, we were planning for some family dinner. I was in San Antonio visiting and she and my aunt by that time, my aunt was living with her. And we had washed all the dinner napkins and were, they needed to be folded. So I offered them to my grandmother to fold the napkins. And you would have thought that it was like this tremendous gift to fold these napkins. And I watched her fold them and then unfold them and refold them to have something to do with her hands. So I think of the women's work that happens around the kitchen table as well. And I didn't grow up in a time where women were sitting drinking coffee around the, the kitchen table very often that all the women in my family worked and worked hard. But so I have a kitchen table here and I have all these pictures of women. I love this beautiful painting of this woman that looks like she's cooking, her hands busy. And so again, I feel like this is going to be a very collage piece today that's going to sort of capture that lineage of women. And the poem, for those of you that are just joining us, oh, thank you, Yvonne. I know, right? So many memories. Fold the napkin, trim the green beans. Yes, trimming the green beans, snapping the peas out of the garden, all ways, just small ways to be useful stories that were told. I, there's so many just beautiful, so much beautiful imagery in the poem. And for those of you that just joined us, I'm going to go ahead and read that poem one more time. It's really beautiful. And there's a link to the poem in the description today as well. Perhaps the world ends here. The world begins at a kitchen table. No matter what, we must eat to live. The gifts of earth are brought and prepared, set on the table. So it has been since creation, and it will go on. We chase chickens or dogs away from it. Babies teeth at the corners. They scrape their knees under it. It is here that children are given instructions on what it means to be human. We make men at it. We make women. At the table we gossip. We call enemies and the ghosts of lovers. Our dreams drink coffee with us as they put their arms around our children. They laugh with us at our poor falling down selves, and as we put ourselves back together again, back together once again at the table. This table has been a house in the rain, an umbrella in the sun. Wars have begun and ended at this table. It is a place to hide in the shadow of terror, a place to celebrate the terrible victory. We have given birth on this table and have prepared our parents for burial here. At this table we sing with joy, with sorrow. We pray of suffering and remorse. We give thanks. Perhaps the world will end at the kitchen table while we are laughing and crying, eating of the last sweet bite. Perhaps the world ends here by Joy Harjo. Such a beautiful poem. And so I'm wanting to capture that sense of women around the kitchen table. And I'm thinking my in-laws <clears throat> live in White Rock, British Columbia, just outside of Vancouver. And they are avid bird watchers, like lifetime birders who've traveled around the world. And one of my favorite places to sit is at their kitchen table, watching all of the beautiful birds that come to their feeders another memory around the, the kitchen table. I think of playing Scrabble with my husband, with my kids, and other games that were played. 
seeing my kids around the kitchen table at our cottages in Nova Scotia, playing all kinds of card games for hours and hours on end. The kitchen table is often the centerpiece of a home, of a life. And so somehow I want to bring all this together, right? Yeah, so many memories, just so beautiful. And we're just going to see where we can get to. So again, for me, it felt like this lineage of women. And I love using the pages in my art journal as a way to honor and celebrate mentors, guides, ancestors, those that are still present here today, but also those that have gone on and left me their legacy. I was very, very close to my maternal grandmother many an hour at her kitchen table. I remember weaving with my aunt on her loom right beside her kitchen table. So many memories. I was raised Catholic and we spent a lot of time with my aunt when we were kids and my mom was working or traveling with my stepfather and uh, At that time, my aunt still practiced not eating meat on Fridays, and she used to make this casserole that now sounds absolutely making tamales. Mm, I love that, Yvonne. Um, we were the ones buying those tamales every year at Christmas. But my aunt used to make this casserole on Fridays that was a box of Kraft mac and cheese with a can of tuna fish. Uh, we didn't have a lot of money, right? So this was an affordable meal for her. She was a, a single mom with two daughters and then also adding my brother and I. And she would bake the mac and cheese with this can of tuna mixed in and sprinkle crunched up Lay's potato chips all over the top of it. And uh, that has always stuck with me. And my mom did not feed us anything like that. Very rarely do we eat anything out of a can or a box. She always loved to cook and was always worried about weight and health. And so we didn't eat things like that. And so it was... Um, always uh, felt like a treat to eat Kraft mac and cheese and tuna fish casserole. And I remember going off to college. And um, OK, this is coming together nicely. And um, eating that as well. It was a cheap meal. All right, somehow I'm wanting this sacred circle design to be on here as well. It feels like that circle of women coming together. Barbara, we read the poem, Perhaps the World Ends Here, by the poet Joy Harjo, H-R-J-O. And I've linked to the words and a video of her reading it in the description. And it's all about the kitchen table. All right, so this one might need to just pop out of there a little bit. So I'm thinking I want some paint on the background, but I kind of love this as this source here of the circle sort of bringing things together. Did anyone else grow up in a family? Hi, Diego. What's up, buddy? I don't know why he's being very needy this morning and just wants to be in my lap. Um, I forgot what I was going to ask. Mm. 
All right, I'm going to fold this in half because then once I glue it down, that crease will be there and my journal will close a little bit better. I have a, a new friend that I've made here in the area and we went to this uh, decadent desserts event a few weeks ago and so we were chatting as we were waiting for the event to start and she was talking about her how her mother was definitely not a cook and I met a woman yesterday who grew up one of nine in a military family the father was in the navy and off and gone and I wonder if they got to have those magical kitchen table experiences and um, for me I'm so grateful for those experiences okay what colors I think this is going to be my favorite teal but maybe I need to get a little bit oh I'm kind of feeling maybe some black gesso might be interesting I want to show kind of the depth in the history here to sort of layer these pages up a little bit. Let me get some scrap paper here behind so I don't glue my pages together. And so you can heard how those pages were really sticky and sticking together. So this was the spread from yesterday. I did end up adding that uh, bumblebee to that spread, but I was super happy with how that turned out. Um, you can get a little tub of Dorland's Wax, that's a brand, D-O-R-L-A-N-D-S, and you can use, use a paintbrush to spread that on to your pages. Let it dry, and it will keep your pages from sticking together. You can also just cut little bits of wax paper to stick in between your art journal pages if you find that that's sticking together too much because if they stick together too much then it can um, be a pain in the butt and your pages will tear. All right. Let's see how we get along painting with a kitty in our lap. Always an adventure. At least he sits still, unlike his sister who's a wiggle worm. He will just quite sit here happily. But he's such a big boy that it's hard to paint over the top of him. And again, I'm just getting the gesso down so that my two pages are the same color to start. I pick the black because it feels like just history and richness and depth. Did anyone else grow up in a family that? didn't cook like I think about my my stepmom when she married my dad she did not know how to cook her mom was German and met her dad when he was in the the military and they got married and they had five kids and they you know obviously traveled a lot and she was like your stereotypical German lady she was you know barely five feet tall which my stepmother was almost six feet tall. Her dad was very tall. And um, she, as Edie, my stepmom, used to say, she cooked for quantity, not quality. So like one of her favorite things to make in a big electric skillet, remember those, was a giant thing of sweet and sour pork and lots of rice. And so Edie never really learned how to cook. And of course, her mother did everything. And Edie had a Prof professional career. I have lost my jar of water. I might have to go find that. Um, and uh, so when she met my dad, she and my dad, and I don't know that my dad had done a lot of cooking, mostly just a lot of barbecuing, and they learned how to cook together. And she just became an amazing chef. But I remember her talking about, you know, food was not important. Love to sit and listen to family talk. When they started to gossip, they would switch to German. I love that. Okay, so they thought nobody could understand them if they were gossiping in German. I'm going to get this page dry here, which is probably going to scare Diego off.
it was very sweet to watch them learn together. Off you go, Dee. All right, now I can decide if I want some color in there or if I kind of like these little bits of these dark edges behind. Get lots of glue stick on here because this is on cardstock, so it's definitely a little bit thicker piece of paper. So I have to work a little bit harder to get that attached. Oh, I'm getting black paint all over the front and the back. So be it. And I just want to get that right in the center so my journal continues to, to close. Oh, and actually, I'm looking at that black paint going. I could put that at the bottom because it's going to get covered up by collage. All right, get that in there nice and flat. And I love things sticking up and out of my journal, as you can tell, so I'm okay with that top sticking up out of there. And then let's just start layering in some of these images. Again, I love this mother-daughter image here. Makes me miss my daughter, who is away at college, and I won't get to see her till this summer. We just reached that uh, that stage of our lives. I mean, my son lives 20 minutes away, and I almost uh, hardly ever see him except on Zoom. But at 24, that's to be expected. All right. This is a. Uh, I think from a good housekeeping, and the paper is very thin, you can see that paper in the images is curling up quite a bit, and it's just because that paper is super thin, and as soon as you get that little bit of wetness from the glue stick on there, it tends to curl up. So again, this is a way inspired by that poem to honor the lineage and the history of the women in my family around the kitchen table. Right, Tori? It, it is tough sometimes. Like when my son left, the oldest one, he was such a little jerk his senior year in high school. We couldn't wait for him to go. He was fighting with his sister all the time and super moody, just like I was at that age, right? And so we were, you know, knowing going off was like the best possible thing that could happen to him. And um, then he was gone, and I cried for two weeks. I, there was such a hole in the house. It was the strangest feeling. So I was a little bit better when Maggie left, still worried but not as sad, um, Maggie's also much more communicative than her brother, and we talk often. And um, then, you know, we hit that point where we don't want them to come back home again because it's been lovely to be empty nesters. I'm not liking this one. It feels too much because she's black that she's doing the work and others are not and that's really bugging me and I don't want that to be the story here I absolutely love this painting of this woman cooking but I feel like she's not part of my story so I often use people of color in my art journaling but I want to be mindful and respectful of the images that I choose to, so I'm present at there's just a little bit of disconnect there that's not quite working for me. So she's going to get saved and honored and uh, celebrated in another spread. 
And so I'm just liking this, you know, idea of the lineage of women in my family. And how many kitchen tables I've sat at with friends over the years and how many conversations have happened. What's missing on this kitchen table here is a coffee cup. Somebody is always drinking coffee or maybe a glass of wine. So um, that maybe needs to get added. And again, I kind of like the mystery of the black around the edges. Thank you, Yvonne. I do love this sort of beautiful circle here around the pages. It still needs maybe a few. Oh, I've got my other person here with her apron on it, this artist. So apron in my family is just, could be in the kitchen or the studio. So appreciating that imagery. And that feels like it's filling that space, right? So that mother-daughter, right? How much did we learn around the kitchen table, sort of the, the history, another pair of women in relationship so again, a page that came together really quickly, um, which I appreciate. I think I'm wanting to maybe bring a little blue and brighten up some of those edges in there, just add a little bit more touch of color here. My palette is getting so pretty with all these colors on it. It's one of the fun things about using a palette, and even this can become collage fodder at some point. So this is my favorite golden teal color. And do I want, yeah, I just want some splashes of color. I kind of like that little bit of dark still showing through. It doesn't need to be painted solid. But there's a lot of, somehow the, the black is connoting the history, right? And the sort of mystery and the ages that have gone before this one. It wants a little bit of yellow as well in there. And then I think it's going to be done. And I'm going to decide how I want to get the poem in here because it's really important. I'm trying to make sure I capture the poems throughout the book so I can remember. And I think this one also needs a title on it. And I think I'm just going to come in here and draw a little coffee cup. I'm going to put it down with some white, and then I'll come back in and add some color on the to it so it stands out. But it's not a kitchen table without a coffee cup on it. But I want to. I want to remember, right? Okay. And I wrote those too big. They're not going to fit all the way across there. And also, I think I'm going to put a little bit of matte medium over the top of that because then I'll be able to write a little bit better over the top. That nice surface down. Also just great for getting around the edges of things, so I'll let that dry for a minute. And this is wanting just some little pops of yellow on the page.
I don't know what I did before Fusca markers. They definitely are one of my must-have tools in the studio. Just adding those little pops of color, little maybe magic or whimsy, even just going right over some of those images. All right, I get this dry and it needs a title and it feels like a playful page really about honoring and celebrating all those memories of kitchen tables in so many houses in so many states and countries. I went to Peru when I was 15 with a group of eight students and three adults on an exchange program through the local YMCA. And for the first few days that we were there, we lived, each of us, with a different family in Lima, the, the capital. And, uh, I remember sitting at their kitchen table, having coffee for one of the first times in my life, having ceviche for the first time in my life, having huge half an avocado with a little oil and salt on it for breakfast. Memories of a very different kitchen table. Okay, I keep trying to start this here, but it's just gonna have to start. And I'm just writing at the kitchen table because I want to honor and celebrate this lineage of being at the kitchen table. And I'm just going to put some little bubbles around it, make it stand out a little bit more. Keep going back and forth between the black and white on this one. But we've got a coffee cup on the table, at the kitchen table, feeling complete. And I'm thinking maybe this one is going to get its own page in the journal rather than covering up what's happening here. So maybe this one's going to get its own page, and this will become something else. This was some old Christmas stationery that my mom had laying around, which made we were using for jelly printing on. All right. So I'm going to just paste this in here. And it's just so that I can remember. So I'm loving that as I'm playing in this journal and with poetry all month long that I am building up like a book of some of my own favorite poems as I go along. 
And again, I'm always open for suggestions. We got a couple of more, well, one more week of poetry. So I will be out of town teaching at Tingle U in Asheville, North Carolina, and celebrating my 27th wedding anniversary the last week of April. So I will not be here live with all of you that last week in April. So we'll do one more week of poetry. And there we have at my kitchen table, inspired by Joy Harjo's poem, Perhaps the World Ends Here, the kitchen table poem. And I realize this doesn't have her name on it either. So I'm just going to write by Joy Harjo. If anyone else has a masterclass sub subscription, uh, I really enjoyed her master class on poetry. That's so funny. I've been thinking about uh, Emily Dickinson, and I have a huge collection of her poetry, and I was feeling inspired perhaps to do a whole one of these small art journal inspired by Emily Dickinson. Um, because I love with her, love her. But yeah, so let's um, next week I will definitely bring in. Maybe we'll have a week of Emily Dickinson because she's just so amazing. All right, let's do it. So definitely, hope is a thing with feathers, and I will um, pick some others. But as always, open to suggestions. So here is my honoring and celebration at the kitchen table with all the amazing women guides and mentors in my life. I even the table that I'm working on was the kitchen table that my husband and I bought from my dissertation advisor and most beloved professor at Stanford uh, when we moved into our first apartment. So it's this beautiful old teak table. So, so many kitchen tables in my life. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next week for some much beloved Emily Dickinson poems and have an amazing rest of your weekend. And oh, look, here's my hubby popping in to join us. Good morning, Brad. Hope it's sunny again today for you up in Vancouver. So all right, my friends, have a wonderful weekend. I will see you again next week. Enjoy. And I've lost my mouse. All right. Bye, everybody.